Okay. Is it a little loud? Am I too loud for you? That's what I thought. How's this? Still too loud? You think so? Okay. I want to thank you all for getting out in the rain this morning. It was sleeting a little bit and snowing a little bit in Davie County. I don't know how it's been in Winston, but several of our people are home snuggled up and hopefully watching us on YouTube or Zoom or something or not. But I'm thankful for each and every one of you that are here. I want to also thank Bill for being back in the sound booth. Um, we need a few more volunteers for the sound booth and for recording and things of that nature. And so that's why uh, Wendy just announced that we'll have a, a membership Sunday in April. So those that would love to participate, some people think, you know, I can't participate until I join the church. So I'd like to see you use your talents uh, in any the ways that you would like to use them here as we share and grow together. So thank you so very much. Thanks for everyone that's tuning in today uh, for your support and your love and your energy. Energy feels just a little scattered trying to put things together this morning and the time changing. So in probably about 45 minutes, the 11 o'clock people will come in. This is a normal thing, but we did spring forward. And with the spring came a change in weather, and we see it change back to winter again. But growth is taking place in every area of our life, I know, for us. We're beginning to come out into the sunlight of life and feel that inner growing begin to expand. And so as we feel that right now, just take a deep breath and know that right where we are, God is. Feel that presence. Hmm. Actually, I'm being taken back to another day and another time. And I think the place that I'm going is the place that you've been in your lifetime before. Have you ever been led into this quietness of a sanctuary? Maybe stepped into your, a room in your house and you could feel the presence right there, right at that moment. You could feel the peace and tranquility. And it was like being in your own little chapel, your own sacred space in the stillness. In a beautiful little setting, maybe in the country or mountains or near the ocean. And before you was a table, and on that table, as a single flower. It may be a rose, maybe a red rose, radiating life, love, or maybe a white rose radiating its purity, its peace, but whatever's there that has been growing and now so beautiful, it gives off a fragrance. It gives off a sweetness. And to me, this represents the spirit within you. Or at any time, we can go into that inner sanctuary, into that quiet space where only you and the divine dwell.
And in that peace, you find love and balance and harmony. You've left the outer world and gone into a deeper place within yourself. You can go to that place right now. Just relax and let go. Recognize your oneness with the divine as I share with you a daily word. As we go deep into the core of our being, we are like splunkers exploring and descending through underground tunnels and vertical shafts to reach the depths of the cave. They find secret places and, a, and quietness and peace. They discover the mysteries of the earth. But right now, in a similar way, let us descend to the very core of our being and connect with our Christ self and discover pure tranquility. Receive understanding, love, and peace. Find this inner place, the center of your being through, through your spiritual practices. A practice of just taking time to be still. To let go of all the hustle and bustle of the world and just be right here and now. Go into that meditative place of silence. And there you will find your own way, your own journey to that deep, settled peace in your soul. Once you found it, you can return often Enter into that inner peace that comes through regular connection with the inner core of love. In that place of peace, you will find answers and comfort in knowing that God is always there. God is always there, right where you are. When in Philippians 4, 7, we read, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds. Dear loving creator, we rest in your presence right now. We recognize right where we are, you are also. As you open our heart, you open our mind. That the two become one. And in that oneness, we have understanding. We have life. We have love. And we give thanks for these moments that we come together, seeing ourselves as individuals, but yet knowing that we are one in you. There is one life and one presence and one power moving within and around and through us. For we are parts of the whole. And we give thanks for this opportunity to begin to see the truth and the truth will set us all free. Jesus said, come and follow me. 
a man such as we, yet more than a man, because he recognized the divinity in him. He recognized God in him. And he came to be that great example. May we awaken and come and follow the example that is before us. That we too will come into that place that we will be example of others. As the Christ within each of us begins to join with the Christ in all others, we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. 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 There are so many layers of who we are, it's hard to grasp it all. But I believe humankind is now moving into that place. And I was thinking this week about Jacob and Esau. And any of the stories in the Bible, I think the Bible is an evolutionary process of our soul's growth. And within those words, our mysteries, our teachings. Unity calls it metaphysical teachings. What's metaphysical all about? It's that deep spiritual getting into the true meaning of what's being said behind the words in the spirit of it. And as we pick up any ancient teachings, ancient wisdoms, we can find truth in it wherever we're led. If there's a certain story in the Bible that you've already always been drawn to, as a child especially, maybe you want to reread that story and ask that the divine within you lead you and guide you, that you can see the characters in there and what they're saying to you. Or see the aspects of yourself that are in that. And I think Jacob and Esau are, they were twin brothers. And it says a lot about who we are. Not only as physical beings, but who the inside or the spirit of who we are is. Do you know the story of Jacob and Esau? I forget sometimes, not everybody has been raised in the Bible Belt. <laughs> and when you, if you have been, like here in the Carolinas, the stories are literal stories to those that read them. And not every word that's written is truth. But in looking at it literally, we come from the intellect. We come from that place where Esau came from. Esau and Jacob are twin brothers. And back in those days, uh, the firstborn received his father's inheritance. And, you know, the others came to made their way along. But when the Two sons were born to Isaac and his wife, Rebecca. Esau came first. And Jacob was holding on to his heel of his brother. <laughs> and so all the blessings went to Esau. So Esau represents our flesh. He represents our body. He represents the things that the physical form enjoys. And Esau loved Mother Earth. He loved nature. Like, I think that's a part of us. <laughs> you know, that's a part of awakening to the whole of who God is in us. It's discovering the beauty and how it connects with us. 
but he was the hunter and he was always out hunting and fishing and his dad you know loved him to bring home uh, some good something to eat but he wasn't a cook at all he could bring it home but he had this brother jacob and jacob represents the intellect not only does he uh uh have that intellect of knowing how to do things in the kitchen and you know to think about things he also had that spiritual essence about him too and so between he and his mother she was so convinced that he should have been the one born first not the one coming out holding the hill of his brother because you know this this kid he's got potential you know he can go somewhere in life the other one he's going to play outside all the time He's going to hunt and fish. He's, you know, that's what he does. So she's talking to Jacob and telling him, you know, you've got to, we've got to figure out a way. You should have all that your father has because you can do so much with it. And out of love, she was, had decided that this, this was the best choice. So one day he was cooking a big pot of stew, of soup. And oh gosh, his brother came in and it smelled so good. And you know how fleshly desires are. You want what you want right at the point. You don't think about it. Sometimes we've probably gotten in trouble doing that too. <laughs> because you do something and think, oh my gosh, why did I do that for? Well, that's what I want to do at the moment. So I did it. Well, that's what he did. He told his brother, he said, give me some, give me some of that pottery. Give me that soup. And he said, no, 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 not now. He said, give it to me right now. I don't want to wait on it. Give me a cup because I am so hungry. If you'll give me a bowl of that, I'll give you anything. You'll do what? <laughs> I'll give you anything. You mean a bowl of this will be worth anything? Yeah, that's what I want right now. He said, okay. Um, I want your birthright. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, gosh. Mm. Well, if I don't have something to eat pretty soon, I just might die. I, I just might give it to me. Give it to me. You know, because what good is the birthright to me if I'm dead anyway? Take it. Give me that soup. Mm. Bad choice. What seemed like a bad choice. Well, that didn't go over very well. So eventually we see division between the two of them and so jacob is leaving his mother said go to where i came from go to my people and there take a wife you know you'll be safe there your brother won't come he won't find you it's okay so he's leaving the place he loved he's leaving his father's house he's leaving all the familiar things all the things he's learned and all the things that he's had around him but he leaves and ventures out. And after he travels a while, it starts to get dark and he's getting sleepy and he thought, well, the sun's going down. I'm just gonna lie here. This is a beautiful place to make a bed. And so it says he took a stone and placed there and put his head on it and he went to sleep. You ever had dreams that you just couldn't turn loose of? They were just there and you knew they had meant something to you. Maybe they linger for years. I'm bad about that. I found a book. I think I told you last week that I'd written dreams. It's like, my gosh, they meant something to me now. It's like, oh, how didn't I see that? But he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw a ladder going all the way up to heaven. And angels were ascending and descending and coming back and forth. And then he saw god at the head of that ladder and oh my gosh you know he felt like he left god back where he was born where his parents were you know because that was the god of abraham isaac and now the god of jacob that god didn't go anywhere else it lived in that place so he woke up and thought this is a place where god is and this morning, I woke up hearing Eddie Watkins Jr. singing, I am the place where God shows up. And he recognized God was showing up there right where he was. 
And that song that Eddie sings, to me, it's like this age is where we're in right now, that we're beginning to see that link between uh, heaven and earth, between the inner and the outer, between you and me and all life. And recognize God is showing up everywhere we look, everywhere. God is everywhere present. And this was such a great awakening for him that he looked at the stone and it said he built an altar. Well, when I think of an altar, I think of an altar, you come and worship. I think of an altar back then where you put a sacrifice on. And I feel like that that altar that he built was saying, even the stones have God in them. Even the stones have God in them. So I'm going to put these stones out here so I can always remember. And I want to give up my old ways. That's the sacrifice we give. The things we've been holding on to. How many things have you been holding on from the past? He deceived his brother. And you know that's eating away at him. So right then, he wanted to give it up, I'm sure. He wanted to give it up. But as the story goes on, you're going to find that he held on to it for a long, long time till he had to wrestle with an angel. But in that time, he was beginning to see the glory of God everywhere he looked. Then let's jump into the New Testament. In John 1. I think it's 15, but I think it has one five in our, our, uh, in what's posted. But it's where the disciples were finding out about Jesus. And there was one named Nathaniel that one of the disciples said, come on, come on. This, I found, I found the, the Messiah. I found him. I found him. Come on. I found him. I want you to meet him. And he said, uh, you know, he's, he's Jesus. He's the son of the carpenter. He came out of Nazareth. And he said, well, what good? Is it Nazareth? He said, what good thing comes from there? That's where the sailors come in. That's where all the hustle bustle goes and the scum of the earth is there. No good thing comes out of there. He said, come and see. Come and see. And before that, Nathaniel was under a tree. I believe it was Nathaniel was under a tree, you know, meditating, I believe. And Jesus saw him coming and he said, you know, I can see this man, the light in him. When he came to him, he said, I saw you. He said, when have you ever seen me before? He said, I saw you in the tree, you know, before you came here. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, you can tell me about me. Yeah, I can tell you about you. You even knew where I was today, this morning. You knew that. Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh, you must be it. Now, have any of you ever done that before? You went to a psychic. And that psychic could tell you all kinds of things. Man, when I first opened up, I had friends everywhere. <laughs> I'd go out to eat, and they'd know where I was. We'd have a table of 20 some people there. I thought it was wonderful, but I realized it was some gift they thought I had, and they came. But Jesus said, hey, just because I said I saw you and I know about you, just like he knew about the woman at the well, these are some of the first things that's going to open up to you, folks. Your intuition begins to open up. Most of you don't pay attention to it, but you'll be with somebody and you know something about them. You can feel it. You feel the goodness or you feel those negative vibes or you have a hunch about something. Nah, I probably wouldn't, you know, I'm not going to act on it. But if you did act on it, guess what? It may have opened the beautiful doors for you. That intuition comes from your heart, not your head. And that's what's happening all over right now. That's why there's so many intuitive people and psychic people that are now putting up their signposts. But that's only a 
just a little bit of what's to come. Because he said, you marvel at what I told you that I've seen you under that tree? He said, what you're going to begin to see is angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. You're going to see the angels descending and ascending. I recognize in me, he was saying, that I'm connected to the vine, just as Jacob recognized he was connected to the divine. I am aware that I'm connected to all there is. And when I'm working from that space, you're not only going to know that what I'm speaking is truth, if your heart can hear what I say, if your ears can listen, and your eyes, spiritual eyes can see, you're going to see and you're going to hear that God itself is speaking through me to you. My heart to your heart. God's vibration, God's voice to your, to you. You're going to experience this. And then he's saying, come and follow me. He didn't say, come and worship me. He said, come and follow me. And we have too many of us today that say, come and worship me. Come and worship me. Because I can do all things for you. I can heal you. I can cast out your negative thoughts. Yeah, we can do some of these things on this level, on the psychic level. But that's not where we're supposed to stay, folks. Because when the divine itself is working, we find ourselves working together for that glory, that glory that will re be real revealed in you. The glory in you. And we're all aspects of that. And as I be lifted up as the divine I, who is the divine God, who are you? I am. Who are you? We say I am. I asked my sister this week. Somehow we got on some stuff. <laughs> there were some issues happening in the family. And we came together and she said, well, why is it you've been going through so many hardships with your, you know, with family issues over the years. She said, but I know some other ministers that, you know, this, that, and the other. And then she, she doesn't quite get what I'm talking about, but it led into some stuff. I said, we walk through these places so the light in us can be squeezed out and the darkness dissolves, something like that. And she said, oh, yeah. And she said, God said his name was I am, I am that I am. Of course, that little light went off in me when she said that. She's getting something here. And she said, even John, you know, if you read John beforehand, you like, yeah, I've read John a little bit. <laughs> yep. Well, like he says that Jesus was the light. And the, the I am is who he is, the great I am, you know, because she wanted me to know that Jesus is the I guess the only begotten son of God, you know, and I said, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, and I said, and who are you? She said, I'm me. I said, who are you? And my sister said her name, because I got a few sisters here. I got three sisters, so I won't say which one she is. She said her name, and I said, but do you say, like Elizabeth, do I say Elizabeth is uh, going to go do such and such. Elizabeth is going to get a new dress. Elizabeth's going to get a new car. She said, no. I said, well, what would you say? She said, I am. I smiled. I said, you got it. When you speak from the I am of who you are, you've already set something in motion. Do you hear what I'm saying? The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. We wake up little by little by little by little. But look at the things that you said, I am. 
I am going to college. I am, you know, whatever comes after that. I am getting that new car. I am going to, I am, I am. And if, as you say, I am, and you know, without a shadow of doubt, that's going to happen. You start going towards it because that I am is taking you there. The power of the spoken word. You use it without even thinking. I am, and you put a blank there. I am in poverty. I am. All kinds of things running there, but I want to just erase all that stuff. But all the things that we say negative using that powerful word, I am. I am sick. I am hurt. I am heartbroken. I am in poverty. I am going into bankruptcy. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm just repeating some things that people say. You can go where I am an addict. Wow. I am an alcoholic. I know we say those things when we're, people are in addiction and they'll say that to affirm it. I am an overcomer. How about that? I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer of the past habits. This will start be what awakens in you. And when you find that power of the I am presence of who you truly are, you can do all things. And then you find other people that have found that spark of divinity in them. And when we start working together, folks, wow, we'll move those mountains. Move the mountains of uh, emotional abuse or anything that's there that's negative. We can help change the world. Tony and I were talking this morning, and he said we were talking about how powerful prayer is. And what if a million or two people were praying the same prayer at one time for this world? Whew. Transformation would take place. And I believe that's where we're going, folks. And I started to say it may not be in my lifetime, but I'm already feeling the move. I'm already feeling the spirit. Working in the hearts of people that are tired of division, the tired of hate, tired of poverty, tired of sickness. And they're going to push through to that place where they're going to see the light. And they're going to recognize right where they are, God is. They'll recognize that ladder to higher places is overcoming in us. All that lower stuff coming up to the heart, coming up to the power of the spoken word, coming up to the opening of divine consciousness and beyond. First, you hold a vision. What you hold in mind creates in time. I recognize somewhere in this thinking about Jacob and Esau that it's different levels of consciousness going on and developing within us. And that subconscious is there. And whatever it grasps, It makes an image of it. It makes an image of it. And as we hold it, it will begin to project that image out into the world until we change it and shatter it. And I happened to think years ago, when the computers came out, I said, you know, that's called the internet. And I knew something in me All the information that's here in this world came from the inner, the internet within us. And all the inner, all the knowledge came from within humankind, within the human heart. When we start searching, the intellect and the deep divine began to work together and bring out all these things. Yes, I believe there's a past that we don't even remember, but you're going to remember, folks. And that's why people are coming up with all these things. These new technologies, new ways of uh, working with actually spiritual energy. We're going into quantum field. We're already there. But when we recognize it, the impossible will become possible. 
because we'll be working with pure energy, pure thought energy. And what we've done in past lifetimes or past times, now this is just me talking, folks, but I'm not the only one that believes this. I'm finding out. I have been getting on the internet a little bit. I have been seeing things, and they believe like I do. It's like, oh, my gosh. I know Deb got on some places, and she said, listen, listen to her. I turned it on. I said, Tony. He said, that sounds just like you. But we, we, that energy is connecting. We're waking up. But we've done all these things before, and we misused it. And now we're coming up with the, uh, you know, splitting the atom, all these things. They've been done before. In worlds that have passed away, or times on, even on this planet, that have been long forgotten, and we know nothing of it. Because the ancient wisdom teachings have been hidden away. Hidden away. So the average person, you don't have enough intellect or smarts to understand these things. Mm -mm. That's always been there. To so only the elite, only royalty has these, this information. But guess what? It's the meat that will inherit the earth. Those that can walk through every situation and behold the good in it. Behold the good. Have you found that happening in you? That's another thing I touched with my sister. Is no matter how dark light get, uh, life gets for us, it helps us push through to find some good in it. How many of you left a relationship? to find there's something better there or left a job and you thought, how can I make it without it for something wonderful to unfold? And it will, if you can't, don't keep saying, you're going to go downhill from there because there's always something more out there for us. Always. I was in that first marriage and you know, I had things. I lived on the river back then. I had horses. There were boats. There were cars. There were, you know, whatever. Let's go skiing. Let's do these things. But where was the true love? It was only things. Where was the peace? And when I left, I had nothing. I was going to eat peanut butter crackers and live in a one, in a one room bedroom from somebody and see if my kids want to squeeze in there with me or something. But things changed. And I'm right here where I daydreamed about. As a five-year-old, wanting to tell others about the God I knew. Because as a child, I wanted to be just like Jesus. I wanted to be like my big brother. I had imagination. And he was in my imagination, Mama said. I wanted to work in the medical field. I worked in neurology for 22 years. My imagination, without the background, that's the first person they ever hired with that, a bachelor's degree in Bowman Gray School of Medicine. And others followed. Doors open when you dream. Life changes when you dream and you believe. So this is where we're at, folks. That subconscious makes a copy, makes an image of whatever you're thinking, whatever you're holding in mind. And so just take that positive form that you've created and hold it. Put energy and love into it. And know, as the teachings of unity say, that's why it's led to unity. It best fit what I believed or what I was taught as a young child not in the church system, but from the heart. And this is where we're at. The Spirit will lead you and guide you. As Jesus said, he said, I'm leaving you. And I've said this so many times. The reason he left in the flesh was he knew we would still be down on our knees worshiping him. Oh, please, 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 give me, give me, give me. I need, I need, I need. He said, all that I do, you can do also. 
but you want to learn. The intellect wants to know. And he said, I will send you someone else. I will send you the Holy Spirit, the whole spirit of life itself. And that spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. And that's not just for one denomination. It's not for one culture or one person or two or three or a few masters. No, it's for all of us. And that spirit will be poured out on all flesh. And it will be poured out. And he's told us when that time would come that it would begin with great power. He said, when you go up to the upper room, you go into the upper room. He told his disciples before he was crucified and gave up all of his ego and everything that went with it. He said, when you go to that place, there will be a man carrying a picture of water. Follow him. And he will tell you where that upper room is. Now, back then, go back over 2,000 years ago. Hmm. I don't recall many men carrying water pictures. It was the women that carried the water. The women did that, not the men. So he was telling us that there's going to be a symbol of a man not only carrying the water, but he's going to be pouring that water out. What's the Aquarian symbol? You know, for Taurus, it's a bull. For Pisces, is it a fish? Two fish. What's the Aquarian age that we are now in? It's a man pouring out from a big water vessel. Spirit is falling on us, in us, and through us. It's a Lent season, a time of releasing anything that we know that no longer serves us. Can we begin to release our negative thinking, our negative feelings, our guilts, anger, resentment? all those things and the temptation of getting something and giving up other things. So often we give up our spiritual truths or our spiritual knowingness just to get the things of this world, just like Esau. I want things, things, things of this world. But Jesus said, wait, think. And I give you these words, he said. Seek ye first. What, a new car, a new house? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all things will be given unto you. It's already been given to us. But we have to recognize the sonship, the daughtership. Like sleeping beauty, we fell asleep. And that kiss of love, the love of the divine, is now awakening people all over this planet. Got a tap on my shoulder. And beyond. There are worlds without end. Last week, I think I heard myself say that each one of us live in our own world. So all the worlds are being touched and all that. We're not just a little planet and members of this one planet. We're galactic beings, whether we know it or not. Multi-level beings. And we're going to wake up to that sooner or later. 
I believe people all over this planet are here to begin to wake up to who they are. That the knowledge of the Lord, as the Bible said in the Old Testament, will fill all this earth as the Spirit of the Lord begins to wash over us, in us, and through us. I'm not here to change you at all. If change comes, the Holy Spirit, the divine within you, will lead you and guide you and change your way of thinking or feeling. So go within, folks. Go into that temple, which that sanctuary is within you. That place where only you and God can meet. And find that guidance. Find that light that is seeking the greater light. And come forth out of the darkness of all situations. And knowing you've heard there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is, folks. There is. Someone's thinking, but my son, my daughter, my husband or wife, they're right on the verge of leaving. This can't be for the highest good. Can't be for the highest good. Sometimes we hold on to those we love so much and we roll ourselves in that and hit so much holding on to it, wanting to help them to be better or to get well or to change their life. And we get so absorbed in that that the time comes that they say, I'm stepping aside that you may grow. I'm stepping aside that you will find a life greater than that that you know right now. Because I know my life is eternal. My life is eternal. I can feel my son. This already, I can feel him saying, I'm right here with you. Just as Jesus said, I never leave you nor forsake you. They watch after us. They're around us. And it's time to let go and let God in every area of our life. And then see the blessings come. I saw no blessings when that car ran into him. None whatsoever. My life was destroyed. I lost him. And shortly I left the marriage. And I lost everything. Everything it seemed. But in that darkness, somehow I found comfort. Because God was with me. And life changed. Life changed. And nothing is ever lost. All is always being given to us until we wake up and find the truth that everything we've ever desired has been given and still is. I'm hearing there's no real divisions in the different frequencies around us. We just have to open our eyes to see. Jesus was on that mountain of transfiguration. There with Moses and others. That had been elevated to that time, that space. And they were not in the physical form. But Jesus was standing on that mount. In his true body. In his light body. So we can communicate with whomever when we open our heart to the truth that we are one. Blessings to each and every one of you. I hope this has been beneficial or blessed you in some way because you bless me every time you enter into these doors, every time I see your presence, every time 
You send light or love to me, or I do to you. I can feel the sweetness and the fragrance of peace and bliss. We are one in all that we say and do, and I give thanks. I want to give thanks to just a thanks, gosh. You know, you've supported these doors being open. I've been here 28 years now. I don't know where the time got to. When Tony was digging through taxes this week, I came across a little booklet. 2007, I believe it was. That several of you, maybe it was 17, I don't know. But several of you had written things to me and was so precious to me. And it had been stuck away and I hadn't seen it. But I've been at some low places like we all get. Feeling like we don't have enough people helping out, you know. And I know that this is a place that love built and that's how it started and stayed together. And I read things from Preston, from Maxine, from you, Barbara, and so many others. And in doing so, I knew all of those people that I had in that little booklet. They never left me. Because Todd said, I mean, Tony told me, he said, honey, why don't you pray that all those that have been in your life in the past would help people come together in unity and love again, that we can fellowship as brothers and sisters and without division. And I said, well, maybe my time is passing. He said, no, just ask their help. And when I read that this week, or just yesterday, I guess it was, I could feel their presence. I could feel their love. And I know there's lots of people out there that are searching for this place. And you know how they're going to find it? Through you. Through you. Because this had unity grew to where it was. Barbara would tell her friends. Preston and Maxine would tell their friends. And people would come just to try it once. And those that came to try it once, they stayed here for years, usually till it was time that they left their body with the blessing still here. So thank you for being a part of my life. And whether I'm in the body or out of the body, I'm going to be right with you. And we're going to work together for the glory of God and for peace on earth, goodwill coming to all humanity. And so it is. Thank you so much. Anything else you should come? Let us bless it together. Find love through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. Thank you, God.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. If we take time for God, God takes time for us. So go into that place with that sweet hour of prayer. Have that alone time. Make friends with that divine presence within you. And you'll see things change in your life like you never thought was possible. Thank you so much. I give thanks for this visible evidence of the bounty of God. I send it forth with love and joy to do its perfect work. Got another little tap. For those that came in late and didn't hear, on Saturday, April 1st, people are going to gather and fix up the outside, you know. And I want to say, Leslie, thank you for those beautiful pansies that you planted. And I know you'd like to have other people helping you out doing such things, beautifying the land. And then on the second, if you'd like, bring finger food. I know I'll do that. And let's get together after that service on the second. But on the second of April, we're going to open the doors for those that would like to join the church. If you'd like to really feel like you're a part of this place, which you already are, but if you'd like to come and join, we'll have, we'll acknowledge you that day to be a member of Unity Church of Winston-Salem. So 